Hi there, and welcome to Maya. So have you just installed your shiny new software and fired her up, only to find that you're not quite sure what to do next? Well, even though the interface may look intimidating at first, it's really not so bad once you understand how each section of the UI breaks down. In general, there are three main areas. At the top, you'll find menus and buttons for Maya's many tools and commands. In the middle, you'll find the viewport, which displays the objects in your scene as well as tools and panels specifically designed to modify those objects. And at the bottom, you'll find animation and scripting controls. Let's start back up here with the menu bar, which is probably easy enough to understand if you've used almost any other software before. In here you'll find almost all of Maya's tools and commands neatly arranged, from general stuff like opening and saving files, to undoing or redoing edits, to more specific task-based commands. Something a little more unique to Maya is that you can change the task-based menus that appear here via this drop-down box. Each of these menu sets is designed to cater to the specific needs of each of these workflows, so you want to set this based on what you plan on doing next. Additionally, shortcuts to many of the most useful commands can be found here in the shelf represented by these colorful icons. So for example, clicking the basic cube icon here creates a cube in my scene exactly as choosing Create Polygon Primitives Cube would have. Like menu sets, shelves are also organized by discipline, except they're even more specific. For example, curved surfaces, poly modeling, and sculpting can all be considered modeling tasks. However, shelves don't change automatically with your menu sets, making it possible to use an FX menu set with a modeling shelf like you see here. If you're unsure what an icon means, you can hover over it and check down here in the helpline, or just wait for the tooltip to appear right on the mouse cursor. Both the helpline and tooltips are extremely useful, so I recommend keeping an eye on them, at least until you're comfortable with all of Maya's bells and whistles. Finally, there's the status line nestled right in between the menus and shelves. This line mostly tells you the on-off state of various modes, like object versus component mode, snapping, mirroring, and so on. Though it does also contain shortcuts to some basic file and rendering commands too. Of these though, I recommend paying special attention to object and component modes, aka green selection mode and blue selection mode. Object mode is for selecting an entire object at once, while component mode is for selecting smaller subparts of that object. This will be important later when we start playing around with position and shape. The last thing I'll say here is that you can use FA to swap between the two as well. Moving on, the entire middle section of the UI is dedicated to viewing and interacting with objects in the viewport. To navigate the viewport, hold the ALT key while dragging any of the mouse buttons. You can also press F to automatically frame a selected object, or A to frame everything in the scene regardless of selection. The panel toolbar and menu give access to all kinds of view options, like wireframe versus shaded views, lights, shadows, smoothing, and other viewport-specific quality settings. You can also hold the right mouse button over objects to bring up the marking menu, which contains shortcuts to all sorts of things you can do to that object. Holding shift or control as well will also bring up different versions of this menu. Left of the viewport you'll find the toolbox, which contains tools for selecting or transforming objects. So if I select the cube, then I can activate the move tool to move it around. The rotate tool to rotate it or the Scale tool to scale it. The last slot here will change depending on my most recently used tool. So for example, if I activate the Multicut tool to add an edge to my cube, then switch back to the Move tool, you'll see I can quickly get back to the Multicut tool here. And you can also double click any of these toolbox icons to bring up their tool settings. 
Just to reiterate an earlier point, using many of these tools in object mode versus component mode makes a big difference. In component, or blue mode, I can select and move individual vertices, which changes the cube's shape. Whereas in object, or green mode, I move the entire object at once. Knowing when to use which is an important skill you'll develop over time. These four buttons underneath the toolbox are my panel layouts. They determine how my viewport is split up. Choices include the default perspective camera, a simultaneous four view of front, top, side, and perspective cameras, a similar two view version, and finally, the outliner, which shows me a list of all the objects in my scene. Additionally, you can use Spacebar to quickly enlarge views or return to the previous one. To the right of the viewport are various editors. The channel box and attribute editor contain the various attributes associated with a selected object, like its exact position, number of subdivisions, and so on. Both of them are broken into sections like these tabs in the attribute editor, or these headings in the channel box. It's important to note that both these editors show the same attributes, just in different forms, so use the one that's most comfortable for you. In general, the attribute editor is the more user-friendly of the two, with plenty of sliders and widgets for editing values. Meanwhile, the channel box lets you see and edit animatable attributes more quickly. If you accidentally close one or both of them, you can always find them up here in the top right. There are also other editors here, like the Tool Settings Editor, which I showed earlier, or the Modeling Toolkit, which contains a wealth of useful modeling tools. Lastly, there's the Character Controls, which are specifically for creating animatable skeletons. You probably won't want to fool around with this one until you're more comfortable in Maya. Finally, this brings us to the two strips at the bottom. The first two deal entirely with animation, like the time slider and playback controls, which are likely familiar to anyone who's used a video player before. From here, you can play, stop, rewind, and manually scrub through time. It's important to note that Maya measures time in frames, though, not seconds. The default frame rate equates 24 frames with one second of playback. So these 120 frames actually represent only five real-time seconds of footage. You can change the frame rate via the drop-down here, and it's generally a good idea to settle on one before you begin your project. Once you have, you can change the total number of frames in the scene, as well as the range represented by the time slider. Other stuff you can change here include looping, performance-enhanced caching, auto-recording animation keyframes, and more via the pop-up preferences window. There's also some animation and character layer stuff, but that's a bit more advanced. Finally, at the very bottom is the command line, where you can issue direct commands to Maya. These are the same commands that all of Maya's other buttons and widgets use too. So for example, if I move this object over and then enter the polycube command, then Maya creates a cube, just like I made earlier when I click the cube button. Maya also supports Python commands at the flick of a switch and has a full-fledged script editor for more complex scripts. And that's the Maya UI in a nutshell. The only other thing to note is that all of these UI components are modular. They can be undocked and moved around just by dragging these dotted areas. You can then redock them wherever these blue lines appear. One way Maya makes use of this is via these different workspaces in the top right. Just like the menu sets I showed you at the beginning of the video, each of these workspaces rearranges the UI based on their respective tasks, hiding things you don't need while enlarging the things you do. 
If you ever need to reset one of these workspaces to the default, maybe because you lost a panel accidentally or you got your UI into a weird customized state, you can do that from this dropdown too. In general, the default Maya Classic workspace is your one-stop shop for everything, and the one you'll see most often in tutorials as well. So hopefully now you feel a bit more at home in the Maya UI. You can check the description below for other helpful UI topics in the Maya Help. Or if you're ready to move on, I suggest checking out the videos in our Intro to Maya course.